It is my great pleasure today uh, to welcome my fellow angler and my friend, Craig Ono. And now he's um, diving out in PEI and all the rivers there and just some beautiful scenery out there. And the name of your company, Craig? Is it Fly, Fly Fish Fishing PEI? Yeah, Fly Fishing PEI. Easy to remember. And I think it's a good segue to the fact that if anybody is actually traveling out there and wants to... Um, grab a guide for a half day or a day. Is it a full day you do, Craig? Full and half days, yeah. Yeah. Thank you everyone for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as Brian mentioned, we've, we've known each other for probably seven, eight years now. And we met at the fishing club that we were both at. Uh, three years ago, um, uh, the family and I, we uh, first we went on a trip to Vancouver Island, came home for a few days, and then went for then went on a trip to Prince Edward Island. When we got back to Toronto, I told my wife and daughter, I said, pick an island because we're moving. Uh, I was born and raised in Toronto and um, always wanted to live by the water. And um, it just came the time where I've had enough with the big city, the crowds and everything that came with it. And I also really wanted to uh, provide my daughter with a rural upbringing as well. She was uh, 12 years old when we moved lived in the big city. And I just wanted to let her know that, uh, you know, there's another life outside the big cities where it's, you know, scenery, we look out our living room window, we see the ocean every day. And I just wanted her to know that it's not all about uh, the big city life and getting a big mortgage. So that was a big part of it. Um, and I started guiding, it was good in a way because I was able to explore all the rivers and streams here with nobody else here. Uh, I was lucky enough to, I do have a mentor. His name is Cameron Ross. He's been, he was born and raised on the island. Um, he's been a guide for over 40 years now. And was, the, I met with him first and I, you know, I, I wanted to make sure there's enough. I didn't want to be stepping on anyone's toes and that. And um, I just asked him, I said, is there room for another guide on the rivers? And he said, absolutely. Um, our, our streams are, are beautiful. They're hard pebble bottom streams, so it's very easy to navigate. Some of the pools are can be deep at high tide. It's it's all tidal too, which is all, very new to me. Is in tidal waters. You don't really want to take them at high tide when there's hard rushing water and through through areas where it's a little bit unstable. So a lot of that comes into factor as well, which is something I'd never even thought about fishing in Ontario because we don't nothing's tidal there you're seeing is uh, the Morel River pretty much uh, from the town of Morever looking upstream so um, this area here is kind of where I would meet the clients um, at the base of the river here and then we drive about uh, eight kilometers upstream um, and then that's where we would we where we walk in from there and the, the stream the Morel River at its widest it's only maybe you know, 10 meters at the widest point, at the widest point, mostly it's only like five meters. So you don't really need any big casts. Um, I'll, any of the beginners, I'll, I'll teach them the basic cast first. And a lot of time it's just a roll cast. Um, and again, with the beginners, I'll make sure there's a, a, a nice big area for back casting. But when you're walking down the river though, you have the whole river behind you. So there's, there's lots of room. I don't, I don't ever really have to worry about it. We, we always start upstream and we, work, we walk downstream, mostly because it's easier to walk downstream and it's, it's, it's better. You're not spooking the fish walking up. You're hitting them above them. Craig, um, you say it's a tidal uh, area. Uh, so what, what species do you catch there? Uh, uh, brook trout, rainbow and salmon, Atlantic salmon. So the brook trout can manage the uh, the salty conditions. Yeah, yeah. The 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 brackish water there. Yeah. There there's sea run. We we got the sea runs in there. Um, so a lot of times what they'll do is they're they'll hatch upstream, way upstream, and then they when they get to about uh, two or three years old, they start they'll start kind of working their way down, 
and um, when they get bigger, they need bigger meals, so they, they head out to sea. Most of my excursions, too, I, I don't do more than four people. Uh, whenever I do have a group of four or more, I'll always um, uh, ask Cameron to come along, too, because I find it, especially with beginners, um, four is really pushing the limit for spreading them out and getting to each person and spending time with them. Um, it, it's tough to, to manage being in the river and guiding when you have four people and they're beginners too. So um, I'll, I'll do up to three alone, four for sure, I'll bring someone else. That way too, you can really spread out the two groups of people and, and then you get to uh, you get really good one-on-one -on -one time because it's a, a two to one ratio. Yep, so that's looking the other way on the morale. Um, you see the roadway there. So we were looking upstream. This is looking downstream now into the St. Peter's Bay. So this water here is all very, very tidal. And then from that bay would go out into the, um, into the Gulf. That's all public water, Craig? Uh, yes. Hmm. What about licenses? Yep, uh, so we have a season license. Um, I provide five day tourist license when people come and they're tourists. Uh, fishing license here is $40. It's $20 for the license and $20 for the uh, Wildlife Foundation um, certificate kind of thing. So it's $40 a year, it's very affordable. This would be upstream now. This is generally where we would start. Um, so you can see it, this is probably one of the widest parts of the river here. And there's a great big pool there and you can still kind of see the reddish tinge of the bottom from, from our red soil. Um, so that's the same area there that um, I was uh, just above, I was standing on the bridge with my drone here. So that's where that fisherman was. This is just looking upstream. So about to the bridge here is where the water is tidal. Um, past going upstream from this bridge, it, it kind of evens out. It's not so much tidal anymore. This was, these are all taken last fall. You can just start and see the color starting to go. Um, this is even, this is still the same area there by the bridge. Um, you can see this, it's only about five meters wide here. Um, in the fall, even at high tide, it's only about a meter deep. So it's, it's really easy to walk along. The fish will always, on, on this part of the stream, they'll always be under the trees on the right-hand side. The, these, these waters aren't heavily fished at all. They'll be, most of the time, you know, you saw that one guy there on that one shot. Um, when I take clients, most of the time, we're the only people on the river. And it's, it's big enough that uh, when you're walking up, upstream through the path, if you see someone, you just walk, you know, 50 meters further and you're in the water, then, you know, you, everyone's working their way downstream. So it's never, never, ever busy. Yeah. So there's, you can see the big bend in the river and we would kind of walk up that left side. So we would cut that corner right off. Same shot, just a little bit high. You can kind of see how the river's bending to the left there. And you don't have to worry about uh, bears? No bears. No are bears on are, the island. Are there any moose? Uh, no moose, no deer. I do know you have lots of black flies in May. Yes. We are totally known for our black flies and mosquitoes. Um, although once you get on the river, they they don't seem to bother you. It, it's the walk through the woods. It can be bad. At the parking lot, it can be bad. Um, but once we get on the river, for whatever reason, they don't they don't bother you. Because I, I think the, the, the fish, that, and that's a, a great fly, is the uh, female mosquito. Works amazing all summer. Just some great waters here. It's really easy to navigate. There's a little guy, called, looks like on an Adams or something. You could, there'll be days where every cast you'll, you'll grab, you'll get one of these guys. There's a big brookie there that was supper one day. <laughs> on my, on my, um, excursions though with the, the clients it's strictly catch and release most of them don't want them anyways they're they're tourists you know they're staying at an airbnb or hotel they don't have the facilities to take a fish home and cook it anyways 
This area is the forks here. Um, the morel kind of branches off into two little, um, two smaller rivers. The, there's the, no, the north and the west rivers of the morel. And uh, the forks here is kind of where they meet. And right where I'm standing is a great pool. And uh, I've caught some of the biggest fish right in this pool. And um, we use an, uh, a shrimp pattern here. And this is really far upstream too. And an uh, orange shrimp pattern works amazing. It's called the Lester, Lester the Lobster pattern. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of rod are you using? And what sort of line? And what sort it's, of uh, it's a nine foot five weight. This here is an eight foot four. That looks like my three weight there. Eight foot four three weight and I only have like eight foot leaders at the most nine normally it's a, just an eight foot leader nice. nice to see you have the proper gear the glasses the cap protection yeah camouflage <laughs> yeah. yeah do you prefer vest or uh chest pack or I have you had seen? I've been wearing a vest forever and just this year I changed to a chest pack um, I wasn't liking the vest because the bottom anything that was in the bottom pockets were getting wet so um, I'm, I'm liking the vest the chest pack um, it is a little bit getting used to for the visibility because when you're looking down you can't really see your feet as well um, so that's getting a bit used to taking a bit used to but other than that, I'm loving the chest pack. And like I said, there, there's days, you know, we have to move move on because we just get stuck in this one pool. In every cast, you'll be pulling these guys out. And they're taking mm -hmm. the drives too, so it's amazing. I guess there's no need to stock the ponds. The, uh, no, not at all. That's all wild. Uh, this is a great pool. This is on a different river. This isn't on the morel anymore. Um, I, I was lucky enough actually to meet the um, the owner here uh, where I can access the river and, and he lets me come in um, through his property. And this is a beautiful pool here. Um, lots of room to back cast. You can get an easy roll cast through here, um, but he keeps it uh, cut well on the shoreline so there's lots of room to back cast so you can see um you know at the front of this picture there it's all flat bottom um it's really easy to walk through and then when you get kind of to these areas you know you just kind of keep to the side it's it's really easy to navigate and here you're just going to cast downstream um cast you know in front of the rocks behind the rocks to each side um I find, and I, I tell my clients, you know, it's, it's all about covering as much water as we can in our time. Um, you know, if you're not catching anything in one spot, just move, give it three, four casts on each side, maybe change up your retrieve. It's, if it's something wet, I'll say, okay, let's try a slow retrieve. Let's try a quick. And, and we spend very little time if we're not catching, we just move on. There's so much ground to cover, which is why I like walking and waiting. I love it. Uh, same part of the river, just the time lapse so we can get the movement of the water. Uh, this is another different river. This is obviously low tide here. You can see all that mud there. Um, and that's Cameron, my mentor there. So here um, on the Brudenau River, we, we'll go here at low tide. Um, low tide is great because it concentrates the fish into the pools. Um, you know where they're going to be. And, and this is a really wide part of the river. So at high tide, you know, we wouldn't even be able to get to that cast over to that other side. Um, and the mud is, isn't that squishy quicksand mud either. It's, it's very mm. hard. So it's easy to walk mm. through, especially if you stay in the water. That area there will be very easy to walk through. And we'll always cast under the trees. You're far enough away that you know what, what you're it's rolling out by that time so that's the same river just looking um looking downstream yeah so cameron um you can see him there i was on the other side of him before shooting upstream so we we're just further upstream now 
Yeah, this is a great little pool here um, in Montague. The, I'll hit this. This is right kind of beside the superstore in Montague. So I'll uh, my wife will go shopping and I'll come to this pool. <laughs> and I've caught some of my biggest fish here too. Like there was in in the fall, there are huge rainbows in that pool, just huge rainbows, like like twenty six, twenty seven. You know, any lots over 20 inches easily just in that pool. So you won't get away with a four weight there, would you? No. There, there I would have this, my six weight. Yeah. Uh, these are a couple clients here. The guy with the orange backpack, he uh, has a tankara rod. He brought his own. So he's nymphing, right? So now we're just starting to work our way downstream. And again, this is uh, low tide here. So he's only, you know, not even to his knees yet and on this shot here we would we would just cast that right side of the stream it's it's deeper on that side so there's lots of nice pools lots of good coverage there too and then you know when you're standing in the middle there you have lots of room to back cast this just kind of shows there's a, there's a great river management group uh, the morale river management group and they're constantly you know making sure there's not much erosion. So they'll make these kind of gabions just to channel the water, um, just to keep the flow going and making sure it you know, creates nice deep channels for the, the fish to, to move in. So this, these uh, gabions were just done last year. They usually hire summer kids and, and part of the, the uh, environmental programs. So there's a really good river management group on the morale. Just some sunset pictures. Here we're allowed to fish two hours before sunrise and two hours after sunset is our, is the window that we can fish. So as the days get shorter, um, so does your fishing time. So right now it's getting longer and longer right now. It's nice. And like, as you can see, there's nobody fishing. Like no other anglers at all. So it, it's amazing. That's, you know, I see, uh, I talk to people in Ontario, sometimes you're fighting elbow to elbow in some areas. <laughs> Another beautiful rookie there, caught in a dry fly. What kind of accommodations do you have there? Um, well, actually we also, I also have a rental cottage here <laughs> um, that I have available, um, but there's, in right in the morale area, it's it would mostly be cottages um, or B and Bs. There's there's no like hotels up in this area or motels. It's it's too rural. Yeah. Uh, but I'm only you know I'm only a 40, 40 minute drive from Charlottetown, so a lot of people would stay in Charlottetown. You pretty much need a car to see the island, so everyone has a rental car. Um, I don't offer any pickup service. The only reason I didn't is because of the insurance. Um, so here's a, a kind of my go-tos. This is a very small, and like a size 12, it's called a dark Montreal. Okay. It's kind of a purplish brown wet fly. This would be one of the. Uh, this would be one of the salmon flies. Mm. Easy to tie, right? Just a foil body, a blue hair and a, a red butt there, a little bit of a beard. Top. These are called bombers. These work yeah. great for salmon. Just a really big buggy, and it's just let it drift. Throw it up and just let it drift down. Right, go right over the pool and they'll come up and take it. That's a pretty big one. And there's a smaller version called a green machine. It's just a bomber. The red butt. Picket pins. Oh, this yeah. is a very old fly. Works great. I, I tend to just go with the tried and true. Find out these old flies that have been used for years and, and use them. And, uh, and generally, I, I don't tie anything smaller than a 12. Sometimes I'll go 14 on the dries. 
but it's usually a 12 or 10. I'll go as, as big as an eight. It's presentation is, is, hasn't been so more prevalent to me as, as since I started guiding. Um, you know, you, a lot of times I'll have two people together and when one person recognizes the presentation of it and getting that fly to land nice, they're the ones that are, they're, they're, they get the hits right away. And it's great because then they recognize it. And then by the end of the day, they're going, oh, that was a terrible cast um, because they see it slap in the water. And, and for whatever reason, women are amazing casters that, when they're beginners. Um, they, they don't try to muscle it or anything. They, they keep the, their arm motion really smooth and, and they don't try to muscle it. And they're, they're great casters for beginners. And if you're ever out this way, just look me up. And I'd be happy to take you. Fly Fishing PEI, got it. Fly Fish PEI, .ca. Fly Fish PEI.